Well, howdy, partner. Mr. Double D50, I'm Doug Drummond, guest reviewing here on MTP Flyers channel. And I want you all to reach the sky because it's high noon and it's time for a showdown between the Apple TV and the Roku 3. Stick with me. I just can't have So the showdown begins with the Roku 3 and the Apple TV. Both retail in the $99, $100 price point range and both are very attractive and slim. Looking at these things side by side for the show off, they're both in black. They're both very slim, lightweight, tiny. You can mount them next to your TV out of the way. They're not huge and bulky. They're not gonna take up a lot of real estate on your tabletop. On the back here is where they are different. The Apple TV has a power HDMI plus a micro USB for service and support, optical audio, and an Ethernet cable to plug in to the internet, or it does have Wi Fi. The Roku's got a DCN, Ethernet, HDMI, plus a micro SD card so you can watch videos and pictures off of there, expandable storage for channels, and a USB on the side. Both offer Bluetooth and Wi Fi support. You can go ahead with the Apple TV and hook up your Bluetooth keyboard, which works really great for searching. You don't have to slide through and click. Now, in the package, you're also going to get a couple of remotes the Apple remote, which is slim and very Apple-esque, and the Roku one, which is more like a Nintendo controller. Now, I did say like the Nintendo Wii Control does have motion. Yeah, it's got a band here for your wrist to fit into. You are going to notice on the side, it also has a volumes up and down button, and you're probably wondering, does that to work the volume of the TV? No, they've actually included a headphone jack, so you can plug headphones into the remote so you don't bother anyone else in the room or even in bed. Now, this does have a tactile type buttons on it, big clunky buttons, and it is a motion control for apps and games. The Apple remote is much more slim, uh, like an iPod, it's got a click wheel at the top for navigating, a menu button and a play pause button, that's it. Very simple, very slim, it works, and that's all there is to it. Let's look at the interface here. The Roku comes installed with Angry Birds Space with the Roku 3. They do have a whole bunch of games you can download, and you use the remote like a Wii remote to play these games. It's got a ton of channels. The Roku 3 comes preloaded with tons of channels that you don't need any subscriptions for whatsoever. It streams Pandora right to your account for free. If you don't find a channel that's on there, you can download more channels. Like I said, they do fit on that micro SD card. You don't just have to have them on the internal storage. And there's channels for everything. Every day they're adding more. In the settings, you can go ahead and change your screen savers, your background, your display options. Plenty of options in there for you to do. And let's take a look at the Netflix app. This one's a little bit different than the Apple TVs. It's a very streamlined, very simple to use. You're just gonna go through, it's got recently watched. It, the way Netflix is, it just takes your viewing patterns and it's very simple. The Hulu one, a little bit harder to operate for me. It seemed a little confusing trying to find out what I wanted to watch, where the full channels were. Of course, both these do require subscriptions to watch. There is no free Hulu or Netflix, but let's move on to Apple TV. Apple TV, you have to have a subscription to pretty much watch anything. Starting with the Netflix, a very different interface here. It's got a menu off to the side where you can kind of pick genres recently watched. You can scroll through, it actually gives you a moving scrolling picture of the videos you're going to watch. And you can go ahead and look through list formats to find the videos you want to find, the movies on demand. I kind of like it better with the Apple TV. Now we're going to take a look at the Hulu Plus, which is also, for me, a lot easier to use. It's very much like the Netflix. It lays it out by what shows you want to watch. It's got tons of movies on here on demand, and they're easy to operate and function through. Now, like I said, with the Apple TV, everything is subscription-based, Major League Baseball, um, but they've also got your movies that you can download through iTunes, movies that you've already purchased, movies that you can rent or buy, and it's all right through your iTunes account, so if you buy it, you can watch it across the platforms. Um, it's also got the iTunes Music, uh, Vimeo, podcasts, and one of the cool things is Apple Trailers. They include that on there. This is a lot of fun for seeing what's coming out at the movie theater, and I check this quite often for all the new movies, new releases coming out. Of course, there are a plethora of settings in here, screen savers, a way to change it, uh, output, and it's got AirPlay, which works really cool. If you have an iPad, iPhone, even a Mac computer, you're just gonna go ahead, find it on that device, once you hit play, there's a button to hit AirPlay off to the side, and it's going to beam it right to your Apple TV, so you can watch it on your big screen. You don't got to squint anymore. You can watch it right on your big TV, just like that, for free, through AirPlay. Now, both these players are very solid players. I'm going to have to give the edge this time 
to the Apple TV. It is one of my favorites. It is much better. They're both very good. Same price. I would suggest the Apple TV. All right, perfect. <sighs> done and done. All right. Um, <clears throat> render this up. What? That's it. There's nothing else. You saw the video. Got like three giveaways going. What else do you want? Go. Video's over. Play the... The last video thing. Oh. See ya!